I dwell in a city that's far from tranquility Streets filled with bad news and iniquity Many struggle to survive Others work a nine to five And the rest just fighting to stay alive It's multi-cultural Different races bring about different faces I've been many places Travel across the globe like a greyhound Searching for a better place to lay But yo, I never found a ground to shake you Ernest Killam Jr. was born and raised in Watts, California to Thelma Woods and Ernest Killam Sr., a former NBA basketball player. Ernest first played his organized basketball for Compton Avenue Elementary School, where he won his first championship and MVP honor. After elementary school, Ernest bounced around to a couple of junior high schools due to family relocations. Ernest was cut after tryouts as an eighth grader at Willowbrook Junior High School in Compton, California. After the last family moved back to Watts, Ernest began to frequent 109th Street Park, where his game began to develop. This is Lou Clark, the director of 109th Street, and I set up a basketball league of young people. Ernest, he became my godson. And he went to Markham Junior High. He used to go over there and play all day and then come to the park and play all day. And he lived on 107th, uh, about two blocks away from 109th Street. When did you first see him play and said, knew that he had potential to just be the type of player that he ended up being throughout his career at uh, Linwood High? Like, when did you well, first he, see him play? Like, his freshman his year, year, like his freshman year, he wasn't, he really wasn't nothing special because he played freshman fours. Mm -hmm. And we've had uh, players at Linwood High that played varsity at the freshman level. I mean, Tom Freeman, uh, we had a kid named Tom Freeman back in the 70s. He, uh, he made all CIF as a freshman, mm -hmm. every 17 points a game. Uh, he got a scholarship to Kansas State, and, you know. But um, uh, so he wasn't nearly as accomplished, as polished a player as others that we had at, at that uh, juncture of his of his career, he averaged 27 points a game on the junior varsity. And uh, but uh, even before then, they had Coach Notley and Coach Peterson had him up on the varsity as a, a sophomore. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, I guess they didn't think he was mature enough to handle it. And so I remember him coming to me um, one day and said, Coach, I want to play JV. He begged me. I remember we were standing outside on the outside court. said, no, Coach, I said, no, Ernest, you go back up and play, you know, mm -hmm. because I didn't want, um, I didn't want to cause any friction with, with Peterson and, and Notley. It wouldn't have been any friction with Notley, but Peterson or whatever. And so, no, Coach, I, I, I don't want to play JV. I want to play JV. I said, okay. So, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, he was excellent. He was the best JV player, you know, best player I had ever had, of course. As a sports writer for the Long Beach Press Telegram and a lot of other publications, I probably saw every outstanding high school basketball player in and around the Long Beach area, as well as up and down the West Coast and, and nationally. And to this day, you know, probably more than 20 years since I lost, I last saw, watched Ernest play, he still stands out in my mind as one of the great players I ever saw and had a chance to cover and write about. I mean, 
what can you say about Ernest? I mean, he would certainly fit into the mold and the style and the flair that so many players today are are are, are known for. Be it Kobe Bryant, uh, be it LeBron James, in terms of the combination of spectacular, you know, athletic skills and, and tremendous basketball ability. I mean, he truly was outstanding. I mean, I remember. Uh, back at the press telegram we we had a large enough staff that we tried to cover a lot of games i remember billy witz uh who was with us at the time and covered a lot of high school games for us he he covered a game i think Ernest's junior year for linwood and i think they were playing alhambra if i'm not mistaken i remember billy everybody would kind of go back to the paper and write their stories and we kind of hang out afterwards and talk about who we saw and i remember billy who was kind of jaded not easily impressed he came back and he was just he had so much adrenaline bumping when he was writing his stories he just talked about Ernest and how the people in the crowd would every time he'd launch a jump shot the crowd would yell money and I think he hit a game-winning shot against Al Hammer and he said he if you remember correctly he said somebody with the shot went up and somebody yelled money and then he hit the shot so Billy to this day and I haven't seen Billy in a while but he still talks about watching Ernest play and of course I certainly got a chance to watch him play not only for Linwood High but during his days at Slam and Jam, playing the Dizzy Washington Slam and Jam game in Compton, and you know games in Carson, Dominguez High, and Compton College, and hey, I remember he played with such an outstanding team. You know he played with Cherokee Parks, the former uh, uh, Marina High McDonald's All-American, who went out and played in Duke and played in the NBA, and of course uh, you know Willie McGinnis, who is a people forget now he's a Hall of Fame football player, but. Uh, and all the success in the NFL with the, with the Patriots, but Willie was an outstanding basketball player, and I remember they played with Willie McGinnis, so he truly was one of the most spectacular players. And so his junior year, um, what had happened was it was some kind of discord between uh, Coach Peterson and Ernest, and your mother felt that Coach Peterson did not like Ernest. And she said she was going to pull Ernest out of the middle and I begged her. I remember that. I yeah. begged her not to do that. I didn't see Ernest a lot that second half of that summer going into his junior year. And I assumed that she pulled him out. And plus, he missed like two or three days, the first two or three days of school. So I, I just, and then I saw him walking. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, um, he uh, and the thing about Ernest, he his um, by the time he was a junior, he was of such high character. Uh -huh. I mean, when I say high character, I'm talking about he, uh, you know, he was a good-looking boy, and he was a um, a superior athlete. The type of player he was, by far the best player I've ever played with. He was the only superstar on the team. Uh, but he didn't act like it. He was real humble. Made sure that everybody, you know, felt uh, a part of the team, and we were just as much as a part of the success than, than he was. And he would always include us into, uh, you know, the things that he was doing, the interviews that he was doing. He would always say, "My teammates, my teammates." And um, I mean, you don't find that uh, too many times with superstar athletes, and he was by far uh, a superstar athlete. Just to come in the gym and you know just shoot baskets wasn't wasn't good enough for us. And it was like once the older guys came in, it was like the pro walking into the gym. Really, you know, like uh, May May. That's what we used to call May May. May May in the gym. You know, let's let's sit on the side and, and watch him hoop. Him, some of my cousins, just just people in the neighborhood. He kind of like laid the foundation really for for young kids that was you know looking to dream. You know, to, to, to be a big time basketball player, at least for me. I never really went to a lot of pro games, and he was probably the closest person that I could affiliate as a pro next to all the people that I saw on TV. Then he starts at Linwood, and he got better and better and better because he worked on all of his weak points. The young man was so good. Uh, it was amazing.
You talk about somebody working hard in a game. I've never seen anybody work harder than Ernest on their game. I mean, before school, man, he would uh, come in the room and get me up. It'd be just breaking day, man. Daylight just not coming through, and uh, he'd come in there and get me up and say, Mark, let's go get some jumpers up. We had a junior high school. Mark from junior high school was across the street from us. He would come in there and get me up. Get up, let's go get some jumpers, man. I used to look at him like he was crazy. Lay down, throw my head right back under the cover. <laughs> and sure enough, he was over there shooting jumpers, man. My mother uh, would come in there. You know, uh, we, we was living in a dangerous area. You know, back then, Crips and the Bloods, it's real dangerous, man. And, you know, my mother would come in there and get me up. Go get that boy and tell him to come home. <laughs> and I'd be like, man, this dude, I gotta get up on my sleep, so. I get up, put on my clothes, go over there, holler, hey, hey, mama said come home, and whatever mom say go. at that time of uh, Long Beach State, Beach State. Beach State Long he Beach wanted State. and well, actually he, that's where I wanted him to go <clears throat> wait you wanted him to go to Cal State I, I, I did I, well because I knew I, I knew Seth uh -huh. and uh, you know um, I had known Seth and I knew Seth was going to take care of him mm -hmm. and Seth had a, a basketball player there already that was about to go into the league um, a guard that Lucius Harris. Uh, yeah, Lucius, Lucius Harris, Harris around him. And I also knew wanted him to go there because when he Ernest his last year, Linwood High, he would go to uh, Long Beach State and uh, give Lucius Harris some teaching. You know. And I'm saying, wait a minute now. Billy Tubbs came in and I'll never forget it. He had this this white town car. Mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln Town Car. It was triple white, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a um, it was parked in you guys' driveway and everything. And I went and I gave Billy Tubbs hell. <laughs> I remember the first day he came to Oregon State, man, with that smile on his face, them, that, that bright smile and, and, you know, that up attitude, and he was just a great person. Just hanging out with him and, and talking to him, man, so humble. He had the whole package when he was just first coming in, so I, I can imagine what he was going to do in the, in the league. Besides basketball, man, that guy, his character, and just he was just a great person. You know, always put the family first. It was just a couple of years, and I'm just glad, you know, we built that bond just in that short of time, man, because, you know, meeting that person in my life was, was a great, great inspiration to me. All the kids at the school, they respected him, they loved him, because he was just a stand-up, stand-up guy. I think the one thing that I feel sorry for people who didn't get to know him or, or, or get to be around him for any period of time is, and, and, and certainly you can't show it on video and it's a little hard to articulate, but he was, I think, one of the more genuine athletes that I ever had the pleasure of not only watch perform, but get to know and interview and write about. Uh, maybe I'm cynical, but over the course of a long newspaper and journalism career, you run across some athletes or celebrities or, or people you write about who you don't particularly care for. You, you Maybe you down their sincerity and maybe they're just not nice people, but Ernest was a genuinely good human being. I'm Reginald Pope, uh, Ernest's pastor. 
glad to have him in the congregation. He was brought here by his grandmother, Mother Martha Cottrell, lived up the street from the church. And he was so into what he was doing. And as I said, at his uh, memorial time, as good a basketball player as he was, uh, he's even a better person. He loved the Lord and he was often about trying to get others to, to uh, accept the Lord. And he said to me one time, uh, Pastor Pope, all of the uh, members of this Oregon team are Christian except two and I'm working on them. He said that was his, that was his goal. In 1993, 109th Street Recreation Center was renamed to the Ernest Killam Jr. Community Building after a petition was signed by over 1,000 residents. your spectacular dunks you guys could smile at each other it's nice to know people in the community and and have friends even though you're playing against them isn't it yes Ernest and Carl all of them they're very good people you know because we play a lot around the summer and stuff and I think they're very good ball players too well, well Ernest uh, first of all yourself we really enjoy your play any uh, particular teams you got coming up in the playoffs you think might be a, a trap for Paramount, a, a difficult team to play? I mean, for Linwood, that is. Uh, yes, I think Polly, San Bernardino, it's a lot of them out there. We're just going to have to, you know, play very good um, defense and come out at the get-go and play very hard. Well, one